This is CBC Here and Now. Beyond Mount Cashel, the province faces dozens of outstanding abuse lawsuits. I've seen co-workers jump into the ditch. Everything from being spit at, from being cursed on, coffee thrown at them. A flag person killed on the job. These workers aren't surprised. It's dangerous out there on the highway. How would be a surprise if I heard something nice come out of his mouth? And she came from Zimbabwe. A local nurse weighs in on Trump's latest tirade. I know where I stand with Donald Trump. Celebrating double digits mm. and our <laughs> January thaw with supper and, of course, your forecast. It's all coming up. Fantastic. Oh, wow. He's even got uh, the whole Hawaiian thing going. <laughs> all right, you get the surfboards ready for Debbie, would you and me? And we'll get those ready with this warm front. Sounds good. How do Check you like your burger? <laughs> uh, well done. Okay, good to know. Yeah, very good. Have you got all the condiments? I do. Uh, we bought we bought mustard just for Debbie. Oh. <laughs> Check thoughtful. in soon, uh, Ryan. Okay, sounds good. It's Ryan Stodd. Now, of course, in news tonight, we'll get to our top story. The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary has announced a major overhaul of its recruiting process. And that's leaving some people wondering whether the RNC is lowering its standards. The force is changing the educational requirements for potential recruits and cutting the duration of the cadet training program in half. Here now is Terry Roberts reports. We're not seeing enough quality applications uh, coming through. The RNC is casting a much wider net in its search for those considering a career in policing. Potential recruits will no longer be required to have completed certain university courses in order to apply. And the one-year cadet training program has been reduced to six months, with cadets now being paid an hourly wage of $15 during the training period. So is the force lowering its standards? Not at all, says this inspector. We value education. If you have a diploma in police studies, you have a degree, you have a couple of years of university, a couple of years of college, the more education you have, you will set yourself up uh, for uh, uh, advancement as you move forward. However, but it's not the only one. Brennan says recruits must still pass the same rigorous screening and the selection process remains very competitive. But he says the reality is that fewer people are applying, about 200 each year, with 16 cadets currently in training. He says the trend is similar for other police forces and the military. The university requirements have been a deterrent, he says. For many years, we've listened to citizens uh, talk about, you know, I, I can't afford to do one year university. I can't afford to uh, in, be engaged in a training program that goes on for over a year without an income. The chief of police has listened to what the concerns of people are. We wanted to make sure we get enough applicants because to be honest with you, we're not getting enough uh, applicants. It's a major shakeup to a recruiting program that's been in place for a dozen years. Going forward, recruits will only be required to have completed at least a year of post-secondary studies, including at the college level. By making changes to our baseline requirement, we are hoping that we will become more attractable to uh, citizens who want a career in uh, policing. We want to be the employer of choice for young people and for people who are looking for career choices. The changes coincide with the launch of a recruiting blitz. The RNC is looking for up to 35 new recruits by the end of March, with the six months of paid training to begin next January. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Now a follow-up to a story we CBC Investigates brought you yesterday. The provincial government recently accepted liability in a sexual abuse case that dates back 30 years. But this is not the only civil lawsuit related to abuse that the province is currently dealing with. Here now is Jen Weitzman following this story. So Jen, how many of these cases have yet to be resolved? It's a surprisingly large number. There are about 75 outstanding active claims of abuse involving government. Well, I spoke with Justice Minister Andrew Parsons, who says the vast majority of those cases are historical in nature. And he says these are not only tied to abuse suffered at Mount Cashel. It includes cases right across the province. We're paying now for what's gone on years and years ago, but the fact is the liability remains with government. In many cases, you see 
normal cases, there's a statute of limitations. But when it comes to these sexual abuse, that, that's not there. We can't stop somebody from coming and claiming this, even though it happened to them decades ago. And I have no issue with that. Parson says many of these cases end up in settlement negotiations for a variety of different reasons. And he says the highest settlement that the province has ever paid in a case involving abuse is $800,000. I wish we didn't have to see another single case of abuse because when you read just one of these, they're horrible. They're young people's lives that were taken from them. And it's, effect, and it's not just something then, it affects them forever. Uh, when you read just the, the abuse that was suffered uh, by people in positions of trust, it's, it's sickening to read. Parson says he doesn't know how long it will take to deal with all of these civil lawsuits stemming from claims of abuse. He says each case is different and there's a thorough process involved with dealing with each one. But he says government takes these cases very seriously. Anthony? The outrage in the United States and around the world over Donald Trump's vulgar remarks about Haiti and Africa shows no signs of abating tonight. Mr. President, did you refer to African Asians who are shit over the Mr. President, are you a racist? Trump refused to answer reporters' questions today about those comments. They were reportedly made yesterday during a private meeting with lawmakers who were discussing immigration. And a warning, the language is offensive. Trump reportedly said, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? And on Haiti, he said, why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. Today, Trump tweeted a denial saying he did use tough language, but not that language. And yet that Democratic senator who was in the meeting says Trump's words were exactly as reported. Now, as you can imagine, what Trump did or didn't say is reverberating right around the world. And that includes here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Here now is Karen Stokes has the story. All over social media and television, Trump is everywhere. What he said, what he's accused of saying, it all has a very long reach. And today it reached right into the living room of Tari and Ebony Hicks. Now, Ebony is from America and Tari is from Zimbabwe in Africa. So today's news hit close to home. U.S. President Donald Trump is once again fanning the... Oh. For Tari and Ebony Hicks, it's another day, another offensive comment from President Donald Trump. To me, it wasn't a surprise at all. It's like, okay, there he goes again. I'm embarrassed. I am honestly embarrassed. The couple has lived in St. John's for several years. Ebony is American. Tari is from Zimbabwe, a country in Africa, the target of a vulgar comment President Trump is accused of saying. I've kind of grown thick skin when it comes to racism and um, stuff and discrimination. It does make me mad when I have to explain to the children. Two of their five children are from Zimbabwe. The oldest is just learning about his heritage. As much as he doesn't know a lot about Zimbabwe, when you're struggling to learn about something and then someone just looks at it in that way, it brings out negative emotions in people and children. It puts us as parents in a very, very hard position. It really takes me off. Because it's ridiculous that someone in, with such high authority, with such power, can say the things that he says and get away with it. So while it's all enough to make you shake your head and groan, oh. Tari tries to find a positive way to digest the onslaught of negativity. When somebody sees you in that way, do you fight back? Do you retaliate? Do you, do you give harsh words just because they say something really bad um, about you? But you, that's when you just have to display love. But some days are harder than others. Carolyn Stokes, CBC News, St. John's. Well, St. John's Surgeon Andrew Fury has led dozens of humanitarian missions to Haiti, and he's not impressed with President Trump's remarks. Dr. Fury joins here now in about 25 minutes. Snowmobilers in Happy Valley Goose Bay are being told to stick to the trails. Warmer temperatures and heavy snowfall means the ice isn't as thick as this time last year. There have been several incidents in this province in recent weeks of people falling through thin ice. In one case, it was fatal. A member of the Grand River Snowmobile Club in Happy Valley Goose Bay took here and now's Jacob Barker to the ice today for a close-up look at conditions. <laughs> Let's go and check the ice. This is what I was telling you about the slob on the ice. 
where the uh, where the snow has pushed down and there's a crack in the ice so the water is being forced up above it. A lot of people don't see it at night when they're transiting so it is scary. This year is the problem with it is we didn't have the cold temperatures and we got all the snow and so the snow is an insulator. What's happening is uh, with the temperatures of not getting down in the low minus 20s and uh, minus 30s the ice doesn't have a chance to build. So we had, what, four or five snowfalls, all of over 10 to 20 centimeters, and it just doesn't have time to thicken up at all. As you saw part way down, the auger got stuck. That was another layer of ice with slop on top of it. So now we'll check and see how thick it is. So scrape down beside the bottom, the correction, the side of the hole, and right there, there's a layer. There's another layer. There's a layer right there at 12. Yeah, so just over 18 inches of ice here. It's not enough. Not enough. Last year we had a huge freeze in uh, the end of November, early December, where the ice uh, built great up until Christmas and then we started getting uh, more snow where we had about three feet of ice by this time. This year we're less than two feet and in some places the water is still uh, coming through. And where you need minimum four inches of ice even to walk on it and six to eight inches of ice for a snowmobile or a person even to enjoy ice fishing and everything, then when you're looking at less than 24 inches for us, it gets scary. As you see, there are quite a few snowmobile tracks around and everything. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends and find out what the conditions are. There are numerous cabins out on the lake and people go out uh, earlier in the year and they actually mark the trails. Out towards Rabbit Island from Burn Point they have a trail marked across with spruce boughs and everything so everybody follows the same trail. So more compaction, the, the ice can actually build up and help make a base, what we call it, so it be, does become safer. Stick to the tracks is what you're saying. Definitely st stick to the track. Well, as you saw at the top of the show, and uh, as we heard in that report, warming up, of course, uh, safety is always important. But also, when it's warm like this, a lot of people celebrating. I was out on uh, Water Street for about an hour. It was like Manhattan, the end of the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it was 10 degrees. The sun came and the to life. And uh, so our colleague, Ryan Snodden, gets all the cushy gigs. <laughs> yeah, there Ryan. There is out there. Ryan is... Uh has resurrected the CBC barbecue. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, that's right. I love how Anthony calls the cushy gig cooking his supper, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how you twisted that. Who wants to go outside and cook my supper yeah. tonight? Or Ryan do it, yeah. Uh, yes, of there course. There we go. With, oh, nice, nice. Yes. And the light that we have uh, set up here, it almost feels like it could be tropical. <laughs> you don't even have a jacket on. No, it's true. It's very mild. We did hit 10 degrees here at our CBC station today, so I asked the boss, I said, can we bring out the grill? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we've got uh, some peppers, Beauty. red peppers. We've got some zucchini. And, of course, uh, the burgers are on the go as well. Now, pretty good. But, yeah, looking pretty good. Are I do they, have some... They dress up some formal barbecuing there in the uh, Snodden household. You got a tie on with a barbecue. Is that the way you usually do it? I, I grew up barbecuing with a, with a tie on, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I had to stick with tradition. Uh, it makes the food taste better. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Now, I'll, I'll dress up your burger in just a second. But first, uh, let's talk about all that weather that okay. is on the way. And I have a graphic to kind of show you the, the Coles notes here of what is on the way. So there's the snow that we're talking about in Labrador and of course big temperature drops on the way for you folks across the big land. We are talking about 10 to 20 centimeters in the southeast. For the northern peninsula that's going to be where the messy ice is. We've got uh, ice pellets, freezing rain and of course the Bayvert Peninsula into some of that freezing rain as well. The west coast is the best poten potential for seeing some localized flooding. 50 to 100 millimeters tonight through tomorrow with all that snow melt, the double digit temps there, it is going to be uh, very, very wet. And uh, again, the potential for some localized flooding. In central parts of Newfoundland, we are also talking about, uh, for you folks, 
Some rain, but not quite as much as the West Coast, but the potential to get into some 20 millimeter amounts. The South Coast 20 to 50 and here across the Avalon 10 to as much as 20 millimeters of rain. And we'll break down your forecast in full detail in just a few minutes. Uh, Anthony, do you like your bun toasted? That's a very considerate question. I like it toasted, but for no more than 15 seconds on all sides. <laughs> oh, that's oh, possible. on for about two minutes. <laughs> what about you, Debbie? Oh, I like it any way you're going to cook it yeah. for me. How about okay. that? Uh, that? See, Debbie, so considerate. Right. And don't Anthony. forget uh, that, that beautiful apron that Ryan's wearing. We're going to give oh, away yes. two of those tonight. And right. uh, if you're lucky, it'll be slathered with snod and barbecue sauce, and uh, it'll be worth more on eBay. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully I don't get any barbecue sauce on my tie, though, or else I'm in big trouble. That's Are true. we going to tell people how they can win this or later? After, later. Yeah, he'll be the quiz yeah. master. Ryan okay. will take care of all that. Yeah, I'm going to bring this food in. Uh, we'll have some supper, and I we'll like break this. down your forecast in uh, full detail in just a few minutes. Okay, great. Perfect. Well, from winning weather with Ryan to winning the lottery, this is Paul and Rita Boland, the province's latest Set for Life winners. Paul bought a $4 lottery ticket on Saturday as a birthday present to himself. Yes, charity starts at home. He turned 50 that day, and when he scratched the ticket, he and Rita realized they won the top prize, either $1,000 a week for 25 years or a $675,000 payout. Being wise, and now 50, Boland chose the lump sum payment. So what are you guys going to do now that you are set for life? Uh, well, we've got a few substantial purchases we want to make. And I think we're going to try to look down the road and, you know, plan our maybe an early retirement. For both you guys or just w oh. the one? Oh, well, me for sure. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the birthday boy, hey? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're the one who scratched the ticket. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, is there any fun purchases in your future, in the immediate future? I can see a new motorcycle coming pretty soon. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes, he got himself a motorcycle as a birthday gift. Congratulations. Seems that we're hearing a lot about uh, yep. lottery winners lately. In the province, true. I don't yep. know what I'm going to do after the shawl, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to this story. Fogo Island, as you know, is a pretty trendy vacation destination that has seen its fair share mm -hmm. of high-profile visitors and celebrities. Yeah, you think about it. Justin Trudeau, Gwyneth Paltrow, Ryan Snodden. <laughs> uh, but the latest name to drop is also a big one worth noting. Yeah, David Letterman says he visited there while vacationing. The legendary former late night TV host has a new show on Netflix. It's called My Next Guest Needs No Introduction and it debuted today. Mm -hmm. And in this episode it included former President Barack Obama and Letterman casually mention, and you'll hear Letterman casually mention his visit to Fogo. No, it coincided with uh, Harry's vacation. Uh, we traveled. Yeah. Uh, we went to, to a lot of uh, fascinating, interesting places. We visited uh, Japan, had not been to Japan before. Yeah. Uh, went to an island off uh, Newfoundland, yeah. Fogo Island, yeah. had, had never heard of it before. Saw icebergs. They play a critical role in maintaining road safety, but their job often puts them in danger.
He's an ordinary guy with a high-end habit. Vernon Smith, the collector of classic cars. If it's not original, it's not here. <laughs> Sunday at noon and Monday at 7. A spokesperson for a traffic management company in Conception Bay South says the death of a flag person in heart's content yesterday is a tragic reminder of just how dangerous this kind of work can be. Tom Gardner was part of a crew clearing brush on Route 80 on the Beta Verde Peninsula when he was struck by a pickup. The 54-year-old was rushed to the hospital and later died of his injuries. Patty Murphy says Gardner was working for another company and that the accident is still under investigation. But Murphy says these kinds of accidents affect everyone in the business. Murphy's company, High Viz Traffic Control, had a crew out today in the west end of St. John's. They've been contracted by Rogers, which is doing some cable splicing work in the area. I met up with Murphy there this afternoon. So, Patty Murphy, what did you think when you heard of yet another flag person killed on the job? It's a tragedy, really. It's a gentleman out there trying to make a living, just like everybody else is trying to make a living, and now he doesn't get to go home today. What are your crews saying to you? Crews that are on the job like this, and you also have them out on the highway, what are they saying about what they're seeing, what they're encountering? There's a lot. They're coming back with a lot. It's almost to the point now where uh, we're even con contemplating putting cameras on our persons and on our vehicles. They're, they've been had everything from being spit at, from being cursed on. Cursed on is a daily thing. Coffee's thrown at them. People saying, how dare you stop me? How dare you do, you know, what gives you the right? That sort of thing. So we're getting, it's pretty hostile environment for us on the highway. Nicole, what kind of close calls have you had on the job? Well, I've had to jump towards the ditch. I've had cars come inside of tapers and almost strike me. I've almost been rear-ended in safety trucks. It's very dangerous. I've, I've seen co-workers jump into the ditch just to get away from traffic. Cars not seeing us or our signs, but clearly we're in all yellow. It's, it's dangerous out there on the highway. We've had to call RCMP, we've called DOT, we've had them all come out and look at us. And it was just like, oh my God, like one RCMP officer came out one day and spent the day with us and he gave out tickets on top of tickets, but it doesn't change the attitude. We have to change the attitude. Yeah. And like you say, people, people are out there, they're doing a job, they deserve to be safe. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, what kind of training do they have to take to protect themselves against, you know, crazy drivers? Honestly, the training for the province is, is, is uh, pretty minimal. It's, it's four hours. They do uh, a four-hour course. They sit down, and then it's up to us as, a, as a, a contractor and a service provider to get them up to what we think is safe and get them up. It's a very, um, it's not black and white. It's a very gray area, and it's all up to interpretation. Um, to me, my job is to make sure my guys get home at the end of the day to their loved ones, to their pets, to whoever they got to get home to. So we, we change the uniform, we try to raise the bar, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's the people behind the wheel that needs to change their outlook and change what they're doing. Yeah, and you know? Patty, you were telling me that even these highly visible suits that you're wearing, they're not even mandatory, it's something that your company oh. insists on providing. That is exactly correct, Abby. Um, this is not a mandatory outfit I have on right now. This is not dictated by any rule in any uh, governing body. I could wear orange and I could just wear just a vest. So I could have black pants on, I could have black boots on, and I could just have a vest, just a basic safety vest. And that's, to me, it's not enough. I've had people really come up to us and wearing this outfit and say, I didn't see you. Really? That happens all the time. How can you not see us? Now, Patty, government uh, increased the fines for not obeying uh, these rules to slow down and, and listen to your flag people. Uh, has it made any difference? From the guy standing on the road? Um, not really. So, Patty, what more do you think can be done to improve safety of the people who are doing this kind of work? I think that what needs to happen is enforcement. Enforcement for uh, both police, uh, and the guys are doing a great job, don't get me wrong, I'm not coming down on anybody trying to do their job, it's just that there's not enough of it out there. They're too busy in other places. 
Um, you know, this is just enforcement of the rules. You know, people have to be responsible for what they're doing behind the wheel of the vehicle, texting and and God forbid everything else they do on the road. So I could go on and on. Patty Murphy, thank you very much. No problem, Debbie, anytime. Thank you. Well, you could certainly see, Debbie, like where you were standing. You sort of put the pylons, plus a bit of ice, a bit of snow, and the vehicles. There's not a lot of room for mistakes, right? There's not a lot of room for mistakes. And of course, if you get out in the highway situation, that company had worked for Nalcor, came right across the island, uh, and then you throw in high speeds. Right. And Patty and Murphy told me that a car came this close to okay. him, going about 100K in a 50 oh, zone. Wow. So it's dangerous. It's very dangerous work. Caitlin Osman is defending her Canadian title in Vancouver. Garçon. Garçon. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Please, you forgot some of the condiments oh, here. Oh, yes, of course I <laughs> did. Snod on, I snod their, on. <laughs> your, their, your meals, the burgers and veggies all cooked yeah. up. Yeah. These mm. are beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> some of my best work, really. Yes, it's really, really uh, good. And of course, I love Dijon. Yes, you do. I do. But I am not going to bite into that as tempting as it is. Because it is tempting. It's not good with 
studio makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly can you reapply lipstick is the question, right? Yeah. If this was smell -a vision you would have an idea of how fantastic it is. You guys talk, and I'll just hide down here and yeah. take one. <laughs> Anthony already uh, devoured his uh, pepper, by the yeah. way, uh, during Start the commercial with the break. Uh, so, so you had to pull out the barbecue because, of course, uh, Ryan's been talking about all that uh, warm weather, and there's a bonus for some That's of right. our viewers. That's right. So we were trying to decide how to give these away, and I thought, uh, I know a lot of us barbecue 365. Uh, I'm one of them. But uh, with today, uh, with the warm-up, I'm guessing there's a few more barbecuing. So if you're barbecuing right now, send us a pic on Woo. Twitter. It's more instant than, uh, than yeah. Facebook. So if you're on Twitter, uh, you're going to be lucky today. If you're barbecuing, you're going to be lucky today. Send us a pic to uh, Anthony or my account. Okay. At Anthony and the Jermaine first or at two, Ryan First two pictures, get the aprons. Sounds like a deal. Barbecue started easy, easy. lighting up all across the Yeah, process. that's right. How quickly can we start it? Uh, and you got to be outside. Remember right. that. No, uh, no, no inside grills. No inside yeah. grills. Yeah, yeah, that's cheating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to talk about. Not just the double digits, but of course the rain, the snow, the ice pellets, the freezing rain. Why don't we start with the warnings? Uh, we'll get those out of the way first. Rainfall warnings in effect for western Newfoundland and the southwest coast into the Bay Verde Peninsula. Special weather statements in effect for most of Newfoundland as well as southwestern parts of Labrador. We also have a freezing rain warning for the Bay Verde Peninsula, the northern peninsula, and a weather warning in effect for the Straits and the Labrador side. What's a weather warning? Well, basically snow, ice pellets, freezing rain, and rain all on the way there. So Environment Canada has just said, hey, let's just issue a weather warning because a little bit of everything on the way there for you folks in the Labrador side of the Straits. And in fact, most of Labrador, again, seeing that mix, but it's back to snow. And these are your primary forecast uh, amounts in terms of uh, precip and what you'll be seeing most of. Rain along that west coast and along the south coast. Talking about 10 to 20 millimeters for St. John's, uh, not a ton of rain here. But the warm temps are going to be the main story, I think, for the St. John's region. Double digits today for some of us. Double digits more widespread tomorrow right across the island. And then even into, I have a sesame seed in my throat, I'm sorry. Uh, even into the Sunday time period. Uh, there's low number one that's been rolling in as we speak. There is low number two. And the contrast in temperatures with this frontal boundary, uh, quite impressive. 14 in Boston, minus 4 in Ottawa, minus 8 in Toronto, minus 17 in Sudbury. Even across our province, it's minus 14 in Labrador City. <clears throat> I'm not lying. I have a piece of burger bun in my throat. I apologize. I probably should have taken a little swig of water or something else. Uh, now, as we uh, take a look at your uh, forecast. Oh, sorry. It's clean. Thank I you, sir. It. I must return. Oh, thank I get, you. I get food, you get water. Thank you. See? What a great show we have here. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, now, take a look at your timeline here. We've got uh, temperatures on the plus side across Labrador southeast tonight. As we roll throughout the night, it's dropping and in a hurry. Happy Valley Goose Bay, Cartwright, and to the Straits around the freezing mark early on tomorrow and a very mild start across the island. We are talking about 7, 8, even 9 degree temperatures. Uh, these are your uh, minimum temperatures tomorrow morning, at least 7 across most of the island, minus 25 to start in Labrador City. And watch as we roll throughout Saturday morning, we are going to be seeing temperatures dropping quickly across the northern peninsula. Everybody else, a very mild day on the island. Rain, uh, again, heaviest along the west coast. Shower chances through central and eastern parts of Newfoundland with double digits for St. John's. Minus 27 in Labrador City as temperatures basically stall there for Saturday. And it's falling temperatures, as I mentioned, in the southeast. Now, winds are going to be gusting 60 to 80 kilometers per hour across the island, and that wind will shift through Saturday night into Sunday morning for west into central. Note the temperature dropping by Sunday morning near double digits in St. John's to start Sunday morning, but we're falling throughout the day as those winds shift. And again, they will be a little on the breezy side with some periods of rain on the Avalon. Everybody else is clearing out. Chances of some freezing drizzle or flurries for central parts of Newfoundland towards the west. So your Sunday forecast, minus 30 in Labrador City, 10 but falling in St. John's and also falling temperatures for the Buren, steady in the minus 2 to minus 3 range for central and west. Lots more to talk about for next week, including a potential snowmaker for eastern parts of Newfoundland and the Avalon. The details are coming up. Debbie and Anthony. 
Thanks so much, Ryan. Well, the pressure is intense Definitely at the Canadian yeah. Figure Skating Championships in Vancouver. They're there this week. No one is under the spotlight more than Marystown native Caitlin Osman. A lot of pressure. She's the defending national champion, and last year she won the silver medal at the World Championships. Well, today she kicked off the defense of her national title in the ladies' short program, but she got into trouble fairly quickly Here comes her combination. when she missed oh. that jump. Yeah, a lot of points deducted there. She did recover well, though, and got the crowd going. She now sits in second place behind Gabrielle Daleman. Tomorrow will be the deciding day with the ladies' free skate in the afternoon. Well, Edith Piaf, well, good luck, uh, Caitlin. Now, I've seen her fall before. She can still win. Yeah. Um, it's all about the difficulty and the points. Fabulous. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's spectacular. Yeah. It would be great if she were able <laughs> to uh, defend her title. It would be yeah. great motivation Absolutely. for her going into the Olympics. All right. Good luck, Caitlin. We'll be watching tomorrow. A local doctor who's volunteered in Haiti reacts to Donald Trump's latest remarks. Welcome back to Here and Now. President Donald Trump has made it challenging for supper time news shows like ours to keep our coverage clean. Bit of a language warning there. But when the President of the United States describes African nations as shitholes and says he doesn't want people from Haiti in his country, how do we shy away from that? Newfoundland surgeon Dr. Andrew Fury with Team Broken Earth has led dozens of humanitarian missions to Haiti. I was fortunate enough to actually go along with him and his team once, and he's with us now. Uh, welcome to Here and Now. Thanks for having me. So Trump has made these comments, then he kind of backs away from them, but sources are saying this is exactly what happened. What's your sense of Donald Trump's stance on Haiti? Well, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And regardless of uh, the current spin on this uh, by our neighbors to the south, I think he's definitely has some Ill, Ill will and poor feelings towards the people of Haiti. And whether it was in the language that was quoted by the Washington Post or in some of the previous comments that he's strayed away from about everyone in Haiti has AIDS, yeah. I think there's a common theme there. And uh, it's quite uh, disrespectful, uh, not only to the American public and the office that he's uh, privileged enough to hold, but of course to the Haitian people who have struggled mm -hmm. 
uh, for so long. It's uh, it's. You've been to Haiti dozens of times now. Oh well, yeah, I lost count. Yeah, I lost count after yeah. twenty. For those of us who've somewhere. who've had the the good fortune and sometimes in challenging circumstances to go to developing countries like Haiti. There's beauty everywhere, right? In the people and the geography. Oh, yeah, I mean, parts of Haiti yeah. are gorgeous. Uh, some Haitian people are remarkable. The overall tenor of his comments, we don't want any Haitians. How does that make you feel as somebody's trying to help the place? Oh, it's profoundly disappointing uh, and hurtful, frankly, to someone who's trying to make the place a little better, to have mm -hmm. someone of his power and authority uh, make those kind of comments. Uh, they're frankly completely ignorant and, 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 and represent a degree of intolerance that I think, I hope, most people in the United States don't agree right. with. Now, you're a keen observer of politics. Do you think part of this is, is Trump reminding, as crass as it is, reminding his base that he's still the guy who's going to be there saying, look, I'm going to keep undesirables out of the United States? 100%. I think some of this is just pure, I hope, I hope, yeah. is pure theatrics. Uh, that I mean, you look at his career from day one. It's a lot of theatrics, a lot of uh, showmanship, and histrionics, and histrionics, and, 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 and distracting from real issues that are going on in the United States right now. Yeah. Look over here, watch the birdie, and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to pass some tax reforms, and and everyone's going to be shocked about my recent right. comments. And nonetheless, so, as shocking as what he said uh, is, the fact is the United States uh, foots a great deal of bills to the United Nations. The United States is still a major funder for uh, international aid. He signaled he wants to pull the plug. Comments like this, do you think that it might signal that places like Haiti and other developing countries that need Western aid, that maybe he is going to tighten it up? Absolutely. He's already started to withdraw some funding from the United Nations and world aid development agencies, and I think he's going to continue to do so. I think that's a move, a political move. I don't think he realizes the ramifications of that move. Hopefully other countries like Canada and other countries around the world will step up and fill that void like we all have a responsibility as a, developing, as a developed country right. to do. So here's a guy who says, I don't want people from Haiti in the United States. Uh, most of the people who come to the United States from Africa come from countries that are, we've heard the word enough. Is this anti-Haiti, anti-Africa, or anti-black? Uh, for the president, I think it's probably a combination of items playing to his base. Um, as you know, as horrific as it is, uh, I still think I, I, I spent some time in the United States uh, training. Uh, racial tensions still still exist, and they're and they're still real. As much as we'd like to think that they're not there, they they absolutely are. Mm -hmm. And those people those people vote. Uh, so I think he's uh, again using uh, a topic like this uh, to try to rally and solidify his base as his popularity is questionable at best mm -hmm. uh, in, in going into his year number two. You'll be going to Haiti in 2018, I imagine? Going in May. Yeah. All right. Andrew Fury, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate that. Thanks very much. A Toronto student is attacked on her way to school for wearing a hijab.
time to meet our young athlete of the day, and this is Gavin Sinnott of Ghouls, seven years old and in his third year of jiu-jitsu and first year weapons at Alex Foley's Martial Arts. All right, so do not mess with Gavin. He loves <laughs> learning new skills and plays first. Congratulations on a recent tournament, well done. Congratulations, Gavin, you're today's young athlete of the day. That's great. Yes. Okay, right. we have an update. That's right. Yeah. We're giving away these CBC aprons, and we asked uh, for your barbecue pictures. A ton of people are yes. barbecuing this evening, unfortunately. Good on you. We only had two aprons to give All away. Right. Uh, here are... Now, <laughs> this is a picture from Cornerbrook. Uh, Golda Randall sent this in and said, uh, I barbecue 365, meaning every day of the year, but it caught fire today. Uh, it's all good. So I hope things are okay, Golda. Fortunately, the... Um, fire retardant feature of Ryan Scott and CBC aprons. You could <laughs> smother that fire with one of these aprons if you had to. That's right. Uh, and this is a great one. Whoa. Uh, yeah, barbecuing pizza. And uh, Roddy, I'm sorry, do you have the name there on that one? Uh, we'll dig it up. Yeah. That looks I've really, really never good. tried that on the barbecue. I hear it is delicious. Yes, and, have... and I actually haven't uh, tried that on the bar. Rosemary O'Keefe, thank you very much, Rod. Uh, Failed to uh, bring that info with me over to the desk here. So yeah. thank you very so, much, much Rosemary, and to, always, and to everybody. I always think it's the guys who are outside barbecuing in the winter. And here you've got like, uh, two uh, women Rosemary viewers. Rosemary and Golda. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everybody who was uh, sending pics. And I love that people were sending their pics to our, my picture of me barbecuing to their family in Ontario yes. saying, <laughs> look hey, <laughs> look at all the warm air here because it's really cool down it in is, Ontario. Yeah. And it will cool down for us. That's one of the big points we have to make with this messy weekend system is, yeah, we have a warm up on the way for the island with primarily rain and a lot of it for the West Coast, but temperatures really dropping and already doing so in Labrador and will continue to drop across the province from west to east through this weekend. St. Anthony uh, starting on the plus side tomorrow, but minus eight by the afternoon. Steady there as we roll into the Sunday time period. Even Newfoundland, minus two in central on Sunday, minus three in uh, the west and on in Grand Falls, or in uh, Cornerbrook rather. 10 on the plus side in St. John's Sunday morning, but temperatures fall there as well. So a little bit of everything on the menu. And you talk about this frontal boundary and the sharp cutoff. Minus 15 in Labrador City. It was plus 4 this morning. And temperatures are really going to be dropping off. And that air mass that is on the way for you folks in Labrador is just off to your west. And you can see it there now. Okay, one last look at this timeline. Note that the rain to the ice pellets and freezing range, which will be most dominant for the northern peninsula and the Bayvert Peninsula through Saturday into Saturday night. That front will edge into central parts of Newfoundland for Saturday night in through Sunday morning, but the bulk of the precip is gone. So it's light freezing rain or freezing drizzle, not looking at a ton of ice buildup based on the current setup. And we are looking at most of that rain set to move southeast of the Avalon as well. But we will get into some of those steadier periods of rain through Sunday, especially over the, the southern parts of the Avalon. Monday, an interesting setup over the Avalon. Could see some accumulating snow mixed with some freezing drizzle as temperatures are going to be around the freezing mark. And then have a look at this. Monday night into Tuesday, this is going to be our next weather maker. Snow on the leading edge and maybe uh, significantly accumulating snow for the Avalon. But right now, I'm thinking just west of the Avalon will be the bullseye with the snow but a lot of time to, of course, iron this out as we roll into the next week time period. And then, watch your timeline here, Thursday into Friday, forecast models projecting yet another warm-up right across the island with snow for Labrador. So, yeah, lots of up and down temperatures and a bit of a roller coaster ride as we run through this seven-day forecast. Temperatures, again, really bottoming out Monday on the island. Rebounding somewhat Tuesday with that weather maker in the mix for central and eastern Newfoundland. Back down Wednesday, rising through Thursday into Friday. Now for Labrador, it's just a whole lot of cold. And the good thing is that after the uh, temperatures drop and a bit of snow, well, at least you can get out and enjoy a little bit. It's temperatures into the minus 20s and 30s with lots of sunshine through midweek. Turning now to national news. Police in Toronto are investigating a shocking attack on a little girl, an attack that may be a hate crime. I feel um, confused, scared, terrified. 11-year-old Kuala Noman was walking to school with her little brother when a man came at her with a pair of scissors and tried to cut off her hijab. She says she screamed and he ran away but came back and tried again. 
Kuala's hijab was cut, but she was not hurt. Police are looking for a man in his 20s. To, in Sugarland, Texas, rather, multiple vehicles collided in a shocking accident. A semi-truck flipped over the railings of an overpass and landed upside down on top of a car below. Police say there was an accident on the road above which caused the truck to jackknife. Witnesses say a good Samaritan helped the driver of the car to escape the wreckage. Both were taken to hospital reportedly with non-life-threatening injuries. Our viewer picture of the day, the second of the week of uh, folks out enjoying the beautiful ice conditions, which unfortunately will be taking a bit of a hit to this weekend, though uh, perhaps most of those rinks needing a flood from Mother Nature. You can make a Christmas card out of that. Oh, That's a gorgeous shot. It's from Eastern Newfoundland, somewhere on the Avalon. Oh, Take your guess and Ooh. we'll reveal after the break. <laughs> I don't know. It's getting towards the end of our Friday program, mm -hmm. and of course, everybody knows what that means, right? That's right. Time for birthdays and anniversaries. A big happy birthday to Rose Turner, formerly of St. Brendan's, now in Oshawa, Ontario, who celebrated her 100th birthday this Tuesday. It's a golden wedding anniversary tomorrow for Dominic and Elsie McGraw of Patrick's Cove. Happy 54th anniversary to Fred and Christine Vincent in Hopedale. They celebrated on the 3rd. Happy birthday to Dorothy Hodder of Port Blanford, who turned 92 years old on the 7th. Happy 93rd birthday to Philip Critchley of Gambo. And a happy 92nd birthday to Grace Forsey in Grand Bank, celebrated on Monday. And happy anniversary to George and Phyllis Crew. They're celebrating 50 years of marriage. And a happy 92nd birthday to George Elliott from Mainbrook. Happy anniversary to Searle and Isabel Waterman in Gambo, who celebrated 68 years together on the 10th. And a happy 92nd birthday to Nora Tobin, originally from Conch, now in Happy Valley Goose Bay. And a happy 92nd birthday as well this Monday to Louise Wells from Little Burnt Bay, now in Embry. Happy 90th birthday today to Lily Penny in Springdale. Happy 53rd wedding anniversary to Phyllis and Ron Peddle of Chance Cove, who will be celebrating on Sunday. 
Congratulations to Wilbur and Marjorie Brake from Cornerbrook on their 60th anniversary coming up on Monday. Happy 97th birthday today to Arthur Inkpen of Shoal Harbor. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Carl and Yvonne Pilgrim of St. Lunaire Gricket, whose special day is tomorrow. Best wishes to Ruth Burton in Twillingate, who will celebrate her 91st birthday tomorrow. And a happy 68th wedding anniversary to Reg and Emmy Clark in Victoria, who celebrated this Wednesday. And birthday greetings to Annie Lane in gorgeous Salvage. She turned 98 yesterday. And a happy 58th anniversary to Joseph and Lorena Hodder in Marystown. They're celebrating today. And a happy 68th wedding anniversary to Max and Sheila Porter in Porterville. It's coming up on Thursday the 18th. And a happy 96th birthday going out to Louise O'Flaherty in Avondale, currently in Conception Bay South. And a happy 58th anniversary to Alethea and John Peddle. Happy 93rd birthday to Ethel May Canning in Bridgeport. Happy birthday to Dean Burry of Greens Pond, New West Valley, who will be 92 years old Tuesday the 16th. Congratulations to Melvin and Lena Grandy of Garnish, who will celebrate their 65th wedding anniversary tomorrow. They were married in St. Lawrence. Happy birthday to Rose Casey of Conch, who, who is celebrating her 91st birthday today. Best wishes to Sarah Ann Warford of Pollard's Point, celebrating her 96th birthday today. Happy 91st birthday to Florence Drover in Irish Town. Gordon Dirtle of Salvage, who is now in St. John's, turned 93 this Wednesday. Happy 95th birthday this week to Lurley Brown in Kilbride. And best wishes to Louise and Ted Ryan from Monroe on their 59th wedding anniversary. That's tomorrow. And a happy 51st wedding anniversary to Junior and Judy Wells in Mount Moriah. Their big special day is Sunday. And happy anniversary to Pauline and Eldon Snow from Clarks Beach, who will celebrate their 53rd wedding anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations to Leonard and Lena Ruby uh, from Kilbride on their 60th anniversary. And best wishes to David and Marjorie Roach in Coley's Point, who celebrated their 59th wedding anniversary this Wednesday. All right, some uh, great pictures there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Congratulations uh, once again. Great Sorry. things to observe. Here's a view that's uh, that's pretty hard to forget. Wow. This is seen from 2,000 meters above Prince Edward Island. Some remarkable ice patterns in the uh, Northumberland Strait. Yeah, it looks like dominoes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It was created by the Confederation Bridge. The pilot who snapped the picture says, just west of the bridge, the ice appeared as a solid sheet. But it was sliced and diced as it as the current pushed it underneath uh, the bridge and these squares went on for kilometers and kilometers. The photographer says he's never seen anything like it. I definitely have not. It's no, like, uh, so chunks interesting. Of, chunks of tofu. <laughs> I was going to say cookies on a baking sheet. There's but, a know, Rorschach test in it. here <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and speaking of pictures, our viewer picture of the day is a beautiful one and if you guessed Brigus, oh, uh, you uh -huh. were correct and uh, I have a uh, Unfortunately, I don't have who actually sent the picture, oh, but Terry so cites, no proof that it's Brigus. Terry cites photography. You'll have to trust me on this one, Anthony. Uh, a beautiful picture there taken in Brigus, and unfortunately, yeah, those ice rinks are going to take a bit of a Yeah, hit. that is yeah. sad. That's a couple of pictures we've had now from Brigus. So That's the truth. Because it's, I've never been there, not at summertime, right. so hmm, looks beautiful. very inviting. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all back here on Monday. Good night, everyone.